top Iditarod dogs can race up to, what, 125 miles a day, I think, for 10 straight that's, days? Yeah, that's pretty average, I suppose. Oh, sure. what, what sort of toll does that take on the dogs? Well, I mean, uh, if they're not trained and they're not... Um, I mean, even, even if they are trained. Absolutely. Uh, what kind of toll? If you train and race just the Iditarod every year, you could probably get a 10-year-old dog to know him in first place. Um, they're that athletic. They're that, um, they're, you know, it's just like a Kentucky Derby horse. I mean, you don't see Clydesdales out there doing it. These dogs are born, bred, and raised for this one event. And they're based, and they're bred and raised and, and whatnot from dogs all over the world from, and different kinds. So they're basically a mutt. But um, they're the kind of dogs that are not feeling good or have a broken toe or some, some ailment and they're still barking and screaming to go. That's what they love to do more than anything. They love to run before they love to sleep or eat or get loved on, they want to run. What's involved with training them? Well, inconsistency. I never put them on a complete schedule. They're always guessing at what's gonna happen. There's no, I mean, to a degree, you feed them similar, um, similar combinations. Uh, one time they'll get it on top of their house, one time they'll get it in the bowl, one time it'll be frozen, one time it's nice and warm, one, you know. I, I, I mix it up all the time. And, and just because it's 9 o'clock at night don't mean it's dinner time. Dinner time is when you eat, you know. So don't, we have a, we have a format that we go by. X amount of calories per day in any combination of ways. Uh, could be small, and I, and I do a lot of uh, small snacking when I'm racing. I don't believe that you're going to fill your tank up all the way and then drain it all the way before you fill it back up. If I can keep a half tank all the time, it's like a car, you can go for as long as you want. How do you keep the dogs focused for that long or for any race for that matter? By starting them out early, doing the same exact thing. Um, I stop a lot. A lot of people don't like to stop. But by stopping, you're actually going farther and faster, in my opinion. And again, these guys want to go, you know, top speeds. I don't care if I'm going top speed, because when you're sitting, I'm still going. Um, we start them at an early age, getting them used to the harness, and we free run them. We let them run around the yard, chase the four-wheeler a couple miles. Um, first and foremost, it's got to be fun. I don't want them to think this is a job. It's not a job if you're having fun. You know, yeah, it's a little bit of work involved, but it's still fun. What makes an incredible dog team? You know, I guess uh, there's a lot of things going to it. You know, for for me, it was the um, the satisfaction to be able to to get a team that cannot communicate with you know really to coincide with one another, to work as a team, and still listen to me. You know the. Um, in 10 days, you're not going to have 10 good days, you know. Every dog's not going to perform at his best level every single day. So, so-and-so is not really working today and not feeling really good. These other ones got to pick up the pace a little bit and make up, take up the slack, basically. Sure. Uh, and tomorrow's your turn, and tomorrow's your turn, you know. Um, they can't be picking on her because she's not really into it today. They can't be, you know, judgmental, so to speak. They, um, they have to be willing to dig deep on their own, not because I asked them to do it, you know. You don't, uh, you know, these, these conditions that we go through, people are, oh, I can't believe you make a dog go do that. <laughs> and I laugh because, I mean, you can't make your poodle do something you don't want to do or it doesn't want to do. You think we make these dogs go out there in this kind of climate and, and perform at these levels? And then get to the end, and, and they're barking and screaming to go. How you know? How did you make them do that? They want to. They want to do this. They love it. They, their 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 pedigrees and their ancestors, you know, go back thousands of years, hundreds of years, trapping, hauling wood, um, you know, transportation, and you know those dogs didn't uh, they didn't get the nutrition. They didn't get the the garments that they're wearing today. They didn't get the love and affection. They were a tool, you know. Uh, 
These are my family members, and I treat them better than I do my kids.